So there are just few things that we will need to set up the serial connection to this module. Um, yeah, we will place this module right here on the breadboard and then uh, we need some kind of power. Uh, we need 3.3 volts. I have here this um, regulating board was cheap uh, from China as well. So you can, but you can also use just your bench power supply or coin battery, whatever you like. So just uh, plug in this wall adapter and connect this here. Uh, you have to take care, you set your jumpers to 3.3 volts on both sides here. Now it's regulated and our power rails are powered with 3.3 volts as soon as, as I turn it on here. Then um, the easiest way I have uh, discovered to um, set up a serial connection uh, which doesn't need any extra drivers is this uh, using this FTDI module here. Um, this is some kind of uh, a rebuild uh, from an FTDI Ar Arduino board, uh, I guess. Uh, it says it's a uh, uh, Fanduino, it's some kind of uh, open design, I guess. And um, this was also a few bucks uh, from China. And um, this one has a setting where you can I don't know if you can see this okay uh, okay uh, it says 5 volts or 3.3 volts and we have to set up this to 3.3 this is really important since um, we connect this to the USB which um, has 5 volts and we want to connect it's um, here this the serial connectors and um, if we would leave it uh, to 5 volts it will uh, communicate using 5 volts and this will um, yeah overload the connectors of our chip which is um, running at 3.3 volts so we have to um, reduce the level to 3.3 vol uh, volts here with, uh, with this FTDI and um, placing this is uh, quite easy we just put it somewhere here and then we can also power this up just by connecting it to the computer and can see it lights up already and then we have to power up uh, the module mm, I have the schematics um, of this HM10 module here uh, how to wire this up um, for oper regular operation and we have 3.3 volts here which is the second from the bottom and we can see okay this is one and this is the second so this is our power line and we have to connect a ground line uh, we have connected all this ground connections um, together in our footprint here in our uh, breakout design here um, so we can just take this one and yeah just give it ground and now it's already running but we can't see anything um, what also what's also here on the data sheet is um, that we should decouple it with uh, 100 nanofarad cap. I have one here. We just place it here directly to 
to these connections. Uh, but um, yeah, it doesn't really matter. And it's even too far away since uh, the wires are quite long. So usually, usually you have uh, to connect it um, close to your pins there. But uh, it doesn't really matter. The power is regulated anyways. Then we have um, to connect the ground of the FTDI, which is here, to the ground of our breadboard. Um, because uh, we use this wall adapter that is a different power source than um, this USB cable here. So that um, they, they can't communicate if they don't have the same ground level. Then we want to see if this is powered on. And you can see on the schematics here we have some um, LED connection um, to see if it's operational. And it blinks if the module is not connected. Uh, wireless to another module um, and it's uh, just on when it's connected and off if it's not running. So we just take this resistor here, I don't know which, what, what uh, actual resistance it has, but I think it was around 600, it doesn't really matter. Um, unless it's not uh, too low. Then third from the bottom, that is this one. And I will place it just over here. And then we have to connect this to ground. So we're getting power from the module here. And um, plus is the longer one, the longer leg. So we'll just put plus here and minus there. And we can see the LED is blinking, so the module is running. Now how to connect the serial? Um, even the schematics shows we have uh, some um, control, hardware control, CTS, RTS. Um, we don't need this. Uh, the UART also works just with TX and RX. And, um, TX means um, transmit, I think, and RX uh, receive. So since this is transmitting, this is receiving, and other ways around, we have connect um, TX to RX and RX to TX. This is TX and this is RX and this one is RX and um, this is TX. So this is enough to communicate with the module and how this is working we will see uh, on the PC. To connect with the HM10 you will need a serial terminal program. Realterm is a quite nice one which is open source and you can download it from the internet. We have to set up the port first. Um, this means this number it means which COM port it is and uh, the FTDI was recognized as serial port 13 VCP0 I don't know if this is uh, called every time like this but uh, yeah I will use this no hardware flow control one stop bits 8 data bits and 9600 bouts this is the default setting you can change this later then we press change and we can start sending to the HM10. What we send first 
to test if it's working at all is the 80 command 80. And we get OK. So this was successful connection um, to our HM10 module. Now we can check out the other AT comments uh, that are listed in this datasheet. And we already tested the test command. Now um, we don't want to change the baud rate right now. Parity bit as well not. Stop it not. Mm, let's check out the name of the module. So, AT plus name question mark. I will copy this comment. So, this is the. Okay, PDF copying is not working now. Okay, I sent this and. <laughs> It says the name of the module is Bitlooney's Lab, since I have already changed the name. But we can set it to the default settings if we want. Um, this would be like factory setup AT Renew. I will send this that will set it to the factory settings. So I'll send this. OK, Renew. This means it was reset and then I can send AT name again. Okay, HM soft. This was easy, wasn't it? Let's check out in the next part how to communicate with another HM10 module.